Hello, I'm Mally Chancefell, Managing Editor of Endodontic Practice US, a Medmark publication. Welcome to a continuing education presentation with Dr. Ralph Schlichting. In this webinar, we will review strategies and tricks to make root canal preparations more predictable and less challenging. Before we get started, I would like to invite viewers to use the chat box on the right side of your screen to ask any questions, and your questions will be answered at the end of the session. Also associated with this presentation is a free CE quiz. Within 30 minutes after the end of the webinar, we will email all attendees the presentation replay, along with instructions on how to access the CE quiz. Now I'm pleased to introduce our guest for today. Dr. Rolf Schlifting is an endodontic specialist in Passau, Germany. He's a specialist for endodontics, a board member and treasurer of the German Society of Endodontology and Traumatology, as well as a specialist member of the American Association of Endodontists and a certified member of the European Society of Endodontology. He has lectured internationally for more than 15 years. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Schlichting. We turn the webinar over to you to learn more about our topic. So, dear gentlemen, dear colleagues, more and more welcome from uh, my office here in Passau, Germany. Um, our topic today, we talk about safe and predictable root canal treatment. And I, in, in, in doing so, I'd like to introduce to you, I think, the most sophisticated files in the market and the most safe files in the market for the moment. Um, and it's a very, very great pleasure for me um, that I get the opportunity to talk to you. So let's get start. started with it. Um, first of all, I'd like to show you where I'm sitting right now in the moment here in Germany. It's in the south, southern part of Germany in Bavaria, very well known for the Oktoberfest. I'm just one hour away from the Oktoberfest. The city is called Passau. And um, what we're doing 100% of my time here in Passau is uh, doing endodontics and working uh, with the help of the microscope and doing 100% of my work under the microscope. So let's get started with our topic today. Um, first of all, some opening remarks to what I'm talking about today about chisai. What does chisai mean? Chisai is a Japanese wording and it means very flexible, very elastic. My second point is uh, GSA is much more than a file. In, in my opinion, it's a system and it's part of an endodontic concept. And I would like you to see at the end of my presentation as well as a part of an endodontic concept. Um, the alloy and the design of the GSA files are worldwide unique and I will show that to you uh, in, in some minutes. What I'm very proud of is that um, what I'm talking to do right now today is already scientifically proven. So we have uh, independent scientific studies about most of the topics or all of the topics which I will argue with you today. So, and my last point is a very important point because I refer to the Chisai as the Chisai concept. And the, what is the idea behind it? The idea behind the Chisai concept is to help all dentists, not only the specialists, but every other dentist who is doing endodontics to improve her, his, everybody endodontic treatment. And I think with some simple cooking receipt, we are able to do it. So, after these opening remarks, I will show you my most recent case. And actually I did it one and a half hours before. So um, not my best case, but the most recent case, it was an, uh, the, an upper molar. And um, that was the picture before obturation of the root canals and after obturation of the root canals. And uh, that was our control X-ray. And you see, it's a quite challenging uh, tooth, so it was a quite challenging tooth. On um, in the mesial buckle, we had really severe curvatures. We had an S, S uh, curvature in, in the distal. And 
uh, we prepared it and with cheese sci files and um, and the uh, meteor buckle one and two and in the distal buckle we used cheese sci files up to a size of 35 and in the palatal we use cheese sci files up to 50 always with four percent table and in my following presentation i will guide you through why I think uh, these files could be very, very interesting for you in your daily practice. So, but first of all, let's get back to the basics and that's very important for me always. All of you know it, but what is the underlying cause for an endodontic treatment? Why do we have to do endodontic treatments? Um, we do have to do endodontic treatments because we have always bacterial infections in the root canal system if we have to do another endodontic treatment. So these are the major causes of an established apical periodontitis. And even a pulpitis, uh, the reason why we have to do endodontics in an irreversible pulpitis, for example, is bacterial infection. So, Let's get to the biological objectives of our endodontic treatments. And I will refer to them a lot of uh, in the following. What are the objectives? The eradication of biofilm and microorganisms. The eradication of infected dentin. The eradication of tissue remnants. And in the end, a bacteria tide obturation of our root canal system, of our prepared root canal system. So what we have to deal with is twofold. It's on the one hand, planktonic bacteria, not that important. And on the other hand, what you see now in that histological picture, biofilm. And all of you know about biofilm. Uh, biofilm is, uh, is uh, a matrix made from extra polysaccharides and a lot of different bacteria which are sitting or inside that matrix. And that makes it quite challenge to remove that biofilm from the root canals from the dentinal tubules. And uh, one of the first papers about biofilm was done in Switzerland by Nair and, and, and his colleagues. And he referred to, or he, he, he had, uh, was the first one to state that biofilm and apical periodontitis uh, are always going together in a certain point of infection in the root canal system. So in the end, what we really try to do in our daily endodontic work and treatment, we try to help the body. Uh, how do we try to help the body get rid of infection of in the end biofilm and help the body to heal itself or himself or herself? So, and I, uh, show you some fantastic pictures of different tooth groups, uh, lower molar, upper molar, uh, and front tooth and lower front tooth. Uh, and what you can see here, if you see the red thing, the red thing is the thing you have to deal the next day you're working, it's the pulp. And uh, what I always want to show to all my colleagues is how complicated the pulp is and therefore, how complicated our daily work is. And um, I always get the question about complex root canal systems. And uh, my opinion is that every other root canal is on the one or the other way complicated. So that's what we have to deal in our daily work, very complex root canal systems. All of you know how we deal with it. We deal with it with the so-called chemomechanical preparation. That means on the one hand, the shaping with hand files and rotary instruments. And on the other hand, the disinfection with irrigation solutions and their activation. So today we'll deal with the shaping with hand files and rotary instruments. But um, the very, 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 very important point is you have to disinfect, you have to use a lot of disinfection solution, gold standards still is sodium hypochlorite and DDTA, and you have to activate your uh, disinfection solutions. So if you, we talk about manual and rotary preparation, 
We first have to talk very, very shortly about excess cavity preparation. Um, what I see, at least in my office every day, is that the excess cavity preparation is carried out the way I would like it to be carried out. And uh, excess cavity preparation is very crucial to our treatment success. Um, if you talk about excess cavity preparation, then you can see in a lot of different papers that the quality of excess cavity preparation is very crucial to the success of endodontic treatment. So at least me, I'm taking care very, very much about my excess cavity preparation. Um, excess cavity, again, we have two different things to deal with. On the one hand, we have to talk about the straight line access to the canal orifices. And on the other hand, we have to talk, talk about the coronal preflaring. What does coronal preflaring mean? It's a funnel shaped entrance into a root canal system, which makes it much more easy for everything to really glide into the root canal system. So if you talk about straight line access, yeah, I brought some pictures to you. And we can see in that picture is that there is a dentinal overhang over the entrance to the mesial root canal system. So your hand file can be inserted in the root canal system only from far distal. What we have to do, we have to get rid of the dentinal overhang and to create a straight line access to the root canal system. You can do that by ultrasonics, you can do that by its glitten drills, um, you can do it with rotary drills, a lot of different opportunities. Uh, we would normally with uh, ultrasonics. But what you can see now in the picture, what I understand, uh, or what, what do we think about if you talk about straight line access? a really straight entrance of um, every other file or every other instrument into the root canal system. The second thing is the coronal preflaring. Uh, what is the purpose of the coronal preflaring? To create a funnel-shaped entrance to the root canal system. Therefore, we minimize the torsional stress on the file when it's engaging into the root canal. And that decreases the risk of file separation. Um, so the coronal preflaring helps us and it makes our work more safe. It prevents iatrogenic mishaps like latches, blockages, or canal transportation. And it improves our debris elimination. Why? Because there is more room for the debris uh, to get out of the root canal. And very, very important, we have a better tactile sensation of the apical constriction, or let's put it better, the apical part of the root canal system. That's what it's all about, where the big curvatures are, for example, where the obliterations could be located. And we have better tactile sensation with our hand files by doing a good coronal preflaring. Um, Furthermore, it enhances the irrigan penetration into the apical third, and that's where we have to have irrigan, a lot of irrigan. One possibility, or there are several possibilities to do a good coronal preflaring. One possibility are, uh, are specially designed orifice openers, like, for example, that Mani Chisai orifice opener with a 14 degree taper. Um, but you can use gates, glint drills, for example, as well. What we do want to see is, uh, first of all, for the straight line access to get rid of that uh, dentinal overhang. And on the other hand, to create a funnel shaped entrance into the root canal system. And in the end, it should look like that. That's a finished access cavity uh, for one, one of my patients. And uh, now I think the next steps get more and more easy. Um, and now it's the first time in my daily treatment routine that I try to get a tactile sensation of the apical parts of the root canal system. 
Now I try whether the root canals have patency, are patent or not. Are there obstructions? Are there big curvatures? Just after doing that proper excess cavity. If we now talk about root canal preparation, um, I would like to share with you some general considerations regarding our mechanical preparation. First of all, and very logically, the inner anatomy of root canals is really diverse. What, I, what do I mean? Um, imagine two root canals. We have an upper front tooth um, from a very young patient, and we have an upper molar uh, from an 80-year-old patient, and we talk about the MB2 in that upper molar. So both of it, the very, very large root canal uh, of the young patient in an upper front tooth and the very tiny, very obstructed, perhaps curved root canal of MB2 in the 80-year-old patient, both of them are root canals in the end. But they are totally different. You can't compare it each to each. So that means different root canals, different root canal anatomies re uh, require different preparation strategies. And therefore, there is no endodontic fire which suits each and every root canal anatomy. That's the bad news today. That means we do have to have different files and we do have to have different strategies for different root canal anatomies. We can try to make it as efficient as possible. We can try to make it as easy as possible, but there won't be one single file which fits for every other anatomy. So if you talk about root canal preparation, there are two possibilities. We have the so-called negotiable root canals. And here we can start over with our rotary preparation uh, all at once. And we have narrow or obliterated root canals, curved root canals. There we need, first of all, a manual preparation. And then we should turn over as quickly as possible to rotary preparation. So uh, generally spoken, these are the two different possibilities. In, what do I mean if I, we are talking about neg negotiable root canals? For me, it's quite simple. If I can reach working lengths very easily with an ISO hand 10 file, then I switch over to the rotary preparation suddenly. So after you can, and I think that's one of the points today, after you can reach with an ISO 10 hand file working lengths easily, you can use shaping files. Um, and there are here again, different strategies for different anatomies, but you can use shaping files every time after you can reach your working lengths with an ISO 10 hand file. If we now talk about a narrow root canal system, uh, things change a bit because here we do need a certain manual preparation of our root canal system. Why do we need a certain manual preparation? Because there are simply no rotary files which do the job right now. Every other rotary file needs some space to work properly. And we have to create that space if the space is not there. So we have, what we are doing manually is creating space for our first rotary file in the end. So we have to talk a bit about hand files. And what I'm doing with hand files, I'm doing the so-called initial negotiation with hand files on the one hand. And on the other hand, I do what I call the initial enlargement of very narrow root canals uh, with my hand files. You can refer to it as an initial glide path. So if you talk about the glide path, I'm normally I'd like to talk more about first hand filing and then rotary is not so much about glide path, but there are some definitions which are not too bad. One is 
that a, any canal is termed secure when a small sized flexible hand file can reproducibly slip, slide, and glide through a catheterized canal to its terminus. What does that mean? You can have simply, you know, it must be simply possible to go into uh, the root canal with your ISO 10 hand file easily. The next um, um, definition is the one I showed you before that any can or like any glide path is established when an ISO 10 file fits loosely into the root canal. So that should be our target. What are the, advant the advantages of a glide path? First of all, we minimize the torsional stress on our rotary instruments, and therefore we have lower risk of instrument fracture. On the other hand, it, and that's something which is often overseen, we minimize the torsional stress on our tools. You can imagine if you have a certain space in your tools, there is less torsional stress, uh, stress uh, with your first rotary or reciprocation instrument than if you try to force an instrument down in the root canal. We minimize the root canal transportation and we minimize the apical debris extrusion. So there are some big advantages of creating an initial glide path. Very narrow root canals. Um, let's have a look into the anatomy of such narrow root canals. Um, what I found out and, 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 and what's interestingly uh, exciting in literature as well is that often these narrow root canals have more constrictions or are more constricted in the ape in the coronal part and in the middle part of the root canal system than in the apical part. There, they're often more wide. Or imagine obliterated root canals, traumatized teeth, for example. The obliteration normally starts over at the coronal part of the root canal. So in the apical parts, often you can, uh, th there is still root canal system. And now some considerations regarding hand files and these very rare root canals, which are often constricted in the coronal part to the middle part of the root canal. So these narrow root canals are very small in diameter and they have a small taper or no taper at all. On the other hand, we have our hand files. These are always 2% tapered because that's an ISO standard. That means that 10 millimeter corner of, an, of the tip of, for example, an ISO 8 hand file, the same as a ISO 8 hand file has already ISO 28 diameter. And why is it important? Because the file to wall contact of these files nearly always occurs in the middle or beginning of the apical third of the root canal. That means where these canals are constructed, more constricted, and where the files get bigger, there you have normally torsion and the file wall contact. And that's often, very, very often the reason that you can't proceed further down with your file into the apical parts of the root canal. So that requires strategy. Here another um, picture, an X-ray, where you can see the same thing. If you have a cons more constricted root canal system in the coronal part to middle part, and the root canal gets wider again in the apical part. Um, very, very interesting study from Germany. What did they do? They tried to describe mathematically how narrow and complicated root canals are normally, uh, uh, what, what structure they normally have. And um, what they found out, these root canals are more constricted in the middle part of the root canal system, and they get wider if in the more apical part of the root canal system, same thing. And that leads us to a strategy. And uh, the strategy simply is, to enlarge these parts of the root canal system, which are more constricted. So what is my procedure or my strategy in very narrow root canals? First of all, I check patency. If there is patency, everything is fine. 
But if there is no patency, I measure the length up to which my smallest file may penetrate into the root canal system. Now what I'm going to do, I irrigate well. All endo guys irrigate if they don't know what to know next. So irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. After I prepare the root canal to the temporary working length with my next larger file or two files. Uh, for instance, the ISO 10 and ISO 12 file, if I started with the ISO 8 file. Again, in between, I irrigate very well. Now I switch back to my smallest file, in my case, normally in Mani Defender with ISO 8. Um, and I try to advance deeper into the root canal. And in 95% of uh, all cases, that works out very well. And I repeat that until patency is achieved. Um, what helps me very much in doing so is a very special uh, hand file uh, with a very special design as well from uh, the Japanese company Mani. And I did not know these files before. They are called D-finders. Why? Um, first of all, the, the cross section of them looks like a D. But the very, very more interesting point is the working part of the files. And if you see the working part, it looks totally different from a K file or a head stream file, for example. Why, why does it look so different? Um, first of all, it has only some sharp cutting edges and a lot of smooth polished surface. And um, the effect of it is that the file really glides through the root canal. There are only some sharp cutting edges. Where do files normally get their torsional stress? On the cutting edges. And there are less cutting edges compared to a normal file. Um, and I tried to show that to you. Um, both of them are Mani files, and one, the right file is a K file, and the left file is the D file, the working part. And if you look at the cutting edges, how many cutting edges are at the K file on a very, very short distance, and that there's only some cutting edges at the whole working part of the D file, you can imagine that it really, these D-finders really glide through the root canal uh, like in a bobsleigh. And that helps me very, very much in my initial enlargement of my root canal system. These D-finders have um, produce or have a bit more stiffness, sparkling resistance, as it's called, uh, than the K5. Uh, not too much more, but what's important is that you get with your hand filing or you get a bit of force at the tip of the file. And that can be better done if you have a file which is a bit more buckling resistant. Um, the next good thing about these D-finders, the risk of fracture is lowered due to the bit more stiffness, but they are not that stiff that they do any perforations or latches. Um, another interesting file which can be used instead for example of the c plus or uh, c plus files for example is the mani glide finder file um, it uh, compromises of uh, some different cross sections and the idea behind is that we have a higher taper uh, in the end of the file three percent taper but makes the um, file a bit stronger there and only two percent taper coral which makes it more flexible in the um, more uh, upper parts of the working part. Um, that's how these client finders look. For me, they have a disadvantage because um, they have too many uh, cutting edges. So I do like the DFinder still much more. Um, and these are the two files which I normally need in any other case, I do not need any more of them. Normally, I just uh, refer to the definers number eight and number 10. Um, so my procedure in very narrow or, or con constricted root canals and initial enlargement with hand files until at least ISO 10. 
And then I changed rotary, my case rotary, or you can change to reciprocating light path fires uh, suddenly. And that makes a big difference because in former days, you had to have a hand or a manual preparation till ISO 20, and then you can change to rotaries. Now we nearly always stop at ISO 10. Why do I suggest you do a switch over to rotary preparation as soon as possible? Because we know from a lot of different papers and science that automated glide path preparation produces significantly less transportation, especially in the apical and middle thirds of the root canal. So after initial enlargement, change to the rotaries as soon as possible. And there is an interesting review article about that point. Um, but they looked into different uh, studies, different papers, and uh, they looked in it. Which old authors favored the rotary glide path preparation and which authors favored uh, the manual glide path preparation. And what you can see, all of these authors suggested rotary glide path preparation, reciprocal glide path preparation as soon as possible. And that leads me uh, to introduce to you the newest generation of night tie files, uh, namely chi sci files. But first of all, we have to have a look by when do we talk about the new generation of night tie files. And I think that's generally very, very interesting. Um, if you look into the evolution of night tie files, you can see that there are different, a lot of different attempts um, to make uh, rotary files uh, more, more and more safe, more and more easy to use. Why? Because in the beginning, we had one problem. We had a lot of fractures with night type files. So every other evolution um, has more or less one target to make more predictable and safe rotary files. Um, and you see there were different approaches. One was the reciprocation motion. Another one was heat treatment of the night tie files after machining of the files. And if we look into uh, the heat treatment or in the theory behind the heat treatment of these files, um, you can see here, we have two different phase structures of night tie. One is the martensitic phase structure. The other one is the austenitic phase structure. And the only thing you should learn out of that graph, it has to do with temperature. The higher temperature, the more austenitic phase there is normally a night tie. The lower the temperature, the more martensitic. And why is that important? Because if we talk about the austenitic state, we talk about old fashioned night tie files. They were hard, they were stiff, and they had so-called super elasticity. That means if you bend them, they you could they have a, they had flexibility, but in the moment the force was gone, they got stiff again and they got in their original structure again. What we do have today with the newest generation of night type files is the so-called martensitic state. That is characterized. It is soft, it is ductile, and it can be deformed very easily and stay and it stays uh, in the form that you give the file. That means it has a controlled memory effect. Therefore, it's much less invasive to every other root canal system. And now comes the secret behind the heat treatment of the different manufacturers. Not the secret behind the heat treatment, but um, that's perhaps the answer why different manufacturers have different flexibility in their files, different safety in their files, and all in all, why different manufacturers or different files have, a diff have different physical properties. Um, that's sort of a schema how normally a file is heat treated after machining. And what you can learn out of it, first of all, all of these files are annealed for one hour at around 600 degrees Celsius. 
Um, but here already you can do different uh, things. You can anneal it very, very quick. You can anneal it slower. The next thing is to cool it down. How do you cool it down? You can water quench it. Uh, you could, could cool it down slower. And after that comes the so-called aging. And what you can see here in that picture is that there are several, a lot of different possibilities for the aging of the night tie files. And um, the thing what is going to happen um, is uh, explained in the next picture. If you look into the microstructure of two totally identical night tie uh, files, both were annealed for one hour with 600 degrees Celsius. Both were water quenched. Both were aged for 30 minutes. But on the left hand, the aging of the file was done with 290 degrees Celsius. And on the right side, it was done with 350 degrees Celsius. And what you can see in the end, there are two totally different microstructures of the formerly totally same night time sample. And that explain why different heat treatment procedures lead to different physical properties of different night time files. So what you can generally say is that heat treatment after machining overcomes manufacturing defects. It modifies the crystalline phase of every other file and that means it, in any case, it increases flexibility. So that's when we take about the new, talk about the newest generation of night type files. We talk about heat treated night type files. Now comes a very, very important point. And I think not a lot of uh, guys talk about that point, night tie and temperature. Um, because the change in the environmental temperature profoundly affects the mechanical properties of night tie endodontic instrument. And that's something which is very important clinically for us. Because if you increase the environmental temperature from room to intracanal temperature, that it decreases significantly the cyclic fatigue resistance. Very, very important. And normally we talk at intracanal temperature, at body temperature. That's where we talk about because that's how we normally, hopefully at least, treat our patients at body temperature. And um, there is a very, very interesting study about that. And you see there were different uh, heat treated night tie instruments or systems um, looked after. And what you see, the blue bar is the numbers of cycles, cycles to fracture at 20 degrees Celsius. And the green bar is at 35 degrees Celsius. And what you can see easily now is that the number of cycles to fracture significantly and rapidly decreases at body temperature or nearly body temperature. And in my opinion, the only important temperature for clinics is clinicians is body temperature. So if you look into different types of files, you see the big difference between 20 degrees Celsius and body temperature. Uh, why is it important for me? Because if we come back to studies afterward, the only really study that counts for me is a, study which is a study which is carried out at body temperature. And what are now the most significant issues in using night tie files? There was a, a questionnaire about that in the States. And what was the most significant issues? On the one hand, fracture, that means the safety of the files. On the other hand, cost. How cost effective is a file? Because what we do know all, uh, night tie files are much more expensive than, for example, hand files. So the thing all of us, I think all of us uh, fear most are fractures. So what do we need? We need a really safe file. Um, the most prone to fracture are severely curved root canals. You, um, uh, you know that. And 
the worst thing for a night type file or for any other file and for any other uh, practitioner is uh, a, a root canal and severely curved root canal with a very small radius. So if you deal with these sorts of canals, it gets very interesting. And I show you some of my pictures here. You saw a severely curved root canal, nearly 90 degrees with a very, very small radius. And I did that with the GSI files. And I think after my explanations, you will do the same thing with the GSI files than I did. Um, first of all, again, let me stress that coronal pre-flaring is from utmost importance because it leads to better centralization of the files in the apical third of the root canal. So the more difficult it gets, the more you should look after your coronal pre-flaring. Now I show another case and look into the mesial root canal, uh, very, very severe curvature and very small radius. Interesting as well, the S-shaped root canal in the distal and um, I did it with the GSI file system from Mani Japan, what I will introduce to you in the next minutes. But first of all, what's important to show you the pictures again, um, before and after obturation. And that's my control picture after um, we did the obturation. And I think what you can see, first of all, um, how good the original canal structure in the mesial and in the distal root canal was conserved. On the other hand, you see, um, you see my um, finishing files. And my final file size was G size 3504 in the mesial root canal and in the distal root canal and 50 in the palatal root canal. And why do I stress that? Because if, I, if you refer again to the biological objectives of our root canal treatment, um, with these five sizes, we fulfill all our biological objectives of different root canal anatomies. So what I'd like to tell you is the GSI file system is a file system for the really, really severely curved root canals as well as for more easy root canals like the palatal root canal. So, so I think with the GSI file system, you can deal with every other anatomy of root canals, despite one, the very, very large uh, root canal of, for example, a front tooth in a juvenile patient. There, you need bigger files than uh, these, which are provided by all of the other, all of the night type manufacturers. What are the features of the GSI file system? First of all, we have an unmatched flexibility due to the unique, unique alloy and the unique design of the files. We have safety even in the very, very complex root canal systems. And what I will introduce to you in the end is a very easy to understand manual, even in complex root canal systems. Therefore, we have a very safe file system, we have a very simple file system, and on the other hand, a very efficient file system. First of all, the alloy. And uh, I have to admit that I cannot say a lot about the alloy. The only thing I know, and I think only few people know about that worldwide, the unique money heat treatment procedure after manufacturing of these files. But what I do know is that the Japanese have, I think, the best and most knowledge about uh, metals in the whole world. Um, and uh, the heat treatment is quite, quite different from every other heat treatment. Why is it important? Because it increases the safety and flexibility of the file system so much. And I tell you in a, in a small clip um, how flexible these files are. And what I want to show you with that clip is how safe, on the other hand, the file system uh, behaves. Yes. 
I just tried to break the 25 or 40 sci fi on the table in the end. And you see the flexibility of the trial system. I did not manage to break any other T sci fi till now. And what's going to happen is that even with the 3504 T sci fi, you have a really, really high, high, high flexibility. And uh, perhaps you can do these things I show you here in the picture with a 2025 fire from some other manufacturers, but I guess nearly with no other 3504 file. It, uh, the file is a Martin Citic file and it, uh, it uh, features the so-called controlled memory effect. That means if you bend the file, it will stay in the form that you gave to the file. Uh, does it have any clinical impact? Yes, it has. For example, if you have a patient which has difficulty to open up its mouth very wide, you can pre-bend it and therefore it's more easy for you to get into the root canal. What about the design that makes another very, very big difference? Um, there's a very small cross section. And if you look into the literature, a very small cross, cross section leads to very high flexibility of the file. It has a low taper. That's why I would recommend to you to use um, mainly the 04 taper T sci file. There are 06 taper tiles available, but I will show you why I prefer the 04 taper tiles. Because the lower the taper, the higher the flexibility and fatigue resistance of night tie files. Again, these are studies. What about the cross section? It looks somehow weird a bit. Um, it has a so-called off-centered cross section. That means that the mass point is not in the center of the file. And that leads to a snake-like action of the file. We refer to it as a swaggering action. That's a symmetrical cross section. The file features radial lens, an off-center design and sharp cutting edges. All in all, you can put it as a slender rectangular cross section. The off-center design leads to that swaggering action I referred to you. And there are advantages because that swaggering action facilitates canal penetration and reduces canal transportation. The swaggering action improves the flexibility of the file. It minimizes the dentin lock and it reduces debris formation. Though there are some advantages of such vagaring action of the file. That's something clinically you have to get used to it. And I showed to you that vagaring action in some moments. Um, what do a lot of dentists fear worldwide? The screw-in tendency of rotary night tie file. That means that if you work in, the, in a root canal with the file, all of a sudden, it gets aggressive and really screws you into the root canal. And that has to deal with geometry, with cross sections. And there was a very, very good uh, paper about different cross sections and how these different cross sections uh, go together with the screw in effect. And the conclusion was that the slender rectangular cross section generates the lowest screw in forces of any file. And the cross section of the T side file is a slender rectangular cross section. So, what about these screw in forces? If you have a constant taper, the torque is rather less aggressive than with a regressive tapered file. Therefore, less screw in forces. Second design feature, the radial lens. With ra radial lens, you have lower screw in forces than with sharp blades. So what does that mean? That means that the file is a non-aggressive file. That's not a file which you should force or push through the root canal. 
clearly you have to have some force on the file, but it's a non-aggressive file. What about uh, the radial lens? The radial lens are a very, very old design element. They were first introduced in the so-called profiles um, and then they were gone for a long time, but they have advantages because the files get better centered in the root canal and they reduce the screw in tendency. They reduce the transportation and decrease the risk of micro cracks. All over, they limit the depth of the cutting, so non-aggressive files. So what did they do or what did we do with the design elements of the different design elements? We took the best of both worlds. On the one hand, we have sharp cutting edges. On the other hand, we have radial lines. And these radial lines, the, that are the, one of the points behind uh, the very, very good centering ability of these files in the root canal and that these files work really, really smoothly in the root canal. So if we look into the working part of the file more nearly or more exactly, you see that there are some sharp cutting edges which lead to the efficiency of the file. And we have these radial lands uh, which lead to the fantastic centering ability of the GSI files. Again, like in a Bob's line. To the tip, only some words to the tip. There are two different tips, an active tip, which is a dangerous tip because it leads, leads to perforations, to latches and so on. And we have the passive tip, like in the GSI, which follows very well to the original root canal anatomy. These are the, it's the assortment of GSI files. And you see there are different file sizes from 25, um, I put it like that, from 1304 to 5004. Um, clearly, you have different possibilities and uh, you can work with any other file. I will present to you afterward a reused set of, set of files um, which will help you in, I will put it like 95 to 99% of your cases. What we do have as well, and I would refer to it as the first file in the GSI system, is the so-called GSI glider. For me, it's simply the first GSI file. Um, it's the first file which I use for rotary preparation and the size is 1304. So, after I have prepared my root canal uh, with the D finder to ISO 10, and I have to have, I have a small kernel. My next file is the GSI glider with 1304. There are already independent studies about the GSI glider file, and I'm very glad about that because that shows about the safety and security of that file. Uh, there was one study. Um, where they compared, I think, the two best uh, glide pass files or rotary glide pass instruments in the world, the HyFlex uh, EDM file and the GSI glider file. And the results, in, uh, if, they, if we look into fractures, were the GSI glider file fractured once in continuous rotation. The HyFlex EDM 1503, which is a fantastic file, fractured twice more than double or double in uh, continuous rotation and once in op optimal glide pass movement. The high flex EDM 1005 had fractures in all instruments. That does not mean it's a bad file, it's a fantastic file, but you see the influence of the taper of the safety of the files. The less taper, the more safe the files are. Another, in my opinion, very, very important uh, study about GSI was a study which is, uh, was done with the prototypes for money. In 2019, at the Münster University in Germany, and, and they, they do care very lot about uh, endodontic files and physical properties. And what they did, they looked how good do or how good is the centering ability of different file systems in an artificial root canal? 
And uh, the result was that the candles which were instrumented with Qi Sai 25 for fire fires were significantly better centered than those prepared with all other instruments. And I will show you these other instruments as well. And the Qi Sai 25 for four fires were significantly faster than all other instruments. And if you have, have a look into that picture, I have to explain that picture a bit to you. The dark part of the picture is the original root canal anatomy. And the brighter part is after root canal preparation. And what you can see now, if you look, for example, into the Rizzi Pro blue file, it does not keep the original root canal at, L at all. It uh, simply, in my opinion, it drills a hole through the root canal. Um, there were different other manufacturers like Rezi Flow, the F6 Sky Taper. Now it gets important because now we got to the Mani prototype 06, that the G side 2506. We had a silk file from Mani and the G side 2504. And again, if you compare the G side 2504 in terms of canal transportation to the G side 2506, only 2%. Difference in the tape, you see how much better the 2504 kept to the original kernel curvature. And what do we do? And what do we want to achieve today is less kernel transportation as possible. And I think that's minimal invasive endodontics. Um, I just um, uh, tried to demonstrate. Uh, you in, in these two short clips, how good the GSI files work. And what we did, uh, we tried to sort out the most complicated root canals and resin, uh, artificial root canals. Um, before I say something else, I have to say to you that there exist studies that for night type files, working in a resin block or resin root canal it's much more complicated than a normal dentin. So uh, we had a quite challenging root canal, always the same root canal. And what I tried, I took very, very, I think, very good uh, uh, nitrile files, the high flex EDM files, and I worked through their se sequence. That means ISO 10, manual preparation. Then we took the high flex EDM 1503 file, and afterward, and in between irrigation, we took the 2005 20 high flex EDM, the next file that they suggest. And look what's happening now in the root canal. Okay. So we have an S shaped root canal again, ISO 10 for manual filing, mm -hmm. irrigation. Now comes the 1503. And it follows the original root canal very, very well. Irrigate again. And now comes the 20. 0.05 and look at the tip of the file. What's happening at the tip of the file? It produces an edge because it does not follow anymore the original root canal. And now we did the same thing with the chi sci files. Same sequence, ISO 10 hand filing, then the G side glider with 1304, and then that's a bit of difference, the 2504 G side file, the next file in the sequence. So we compare now the 20.05 from high flex with the 2504 from G side, and look what's happening. ISO 10 hand file. Kleiner, 
and you can see a bit that swaggering motion. Some. You will see it even better with the 25 or so. So then don't get nervous or afraid of it. It's just normal. Check patency again. And look at the tip of the cheese side now. How beautifully it goes around the very, very sharp corner in the end. So, if you talk about those severely curved root canals, I'm thinking you're very, very good off with the cheese side files. Here are just some cases which I did over the last years uh, when we de developed the files. And you see how nice it really stays to do the original root canal curvature. That's one which is much more difficult. And again, and here you see my sequence for very, very severely curved root canals. ISO 10 hand files, then the G side glider 13 or 4, then the G side 25 or 4, and you do not need any other file in between, and then the 35 or 4. So just three rotaries for a very, very severely curved root canal. Um, besides the safety and um, cost plays an important role worldwide um, for uh, a lot of uh, uh, dentists. So there was a study at simulated root tube cutting, uh, simulated racine blocks, again, artificial root canals. Again, artificial root canals are much more difficult for any other night type file than, for example, normal dentine. And um, uh, they studied how many artificial root canals you can prepare with one file till it fractures. And um, what they found out that uh, with the cheese side files, you could prepare up to 53 root canals till it fractures. Um, and what does that mean? It simply means multiple uses possible. Please do not take them 53 times, but I think five to 10 times uh, is still very safe. And now comes, in my opinion, and I think it's the last study, but it's the most important study for all of you as clinicians, because that study is a landmark study and it shows how safe the GSI files will be in your daily work. Um, what did they do? Um, they studied again uh, the numbers of cycles to fracture and how many files fractured, but they did it totally different from all other studies. So we have to go a bit into that study design. The problems of all current cyclic fatigue studies are there is no standardization. There are so many different study setups. And the most crucial aspect is the congruence between the artificial canal wall and the dimensions of the instruments. Because normally, all these cyclic st fatigue studies are done with uh, prefabricated resin root canals, to put it simple. But we have a lot of different night type files and a lot of different designs. And therefore, if you talk about in the most extreme uh, case of an 8% tapered uh, night type file, and you want to compare it to a 3% tapered night type file, and you let them both work in a prefabricated root canal, they do have to work totally differently. Because either the 8% the tapered file has to work, has much more torque than the 3% tapered file or the other way around. But you cannot, uh, uh, you have no standardization. So therefore, you cannot compare each file to the other file. So what did they do? They produced artificial root canals matching to the design of the investigated instrument that were produced. And that was done by an additive laser melting process 
which they described in another study. And very, very important, that study was carried out at body temperature. And we know that the increase in temperature significantly lowers the cycles to fracture of every night tie instrument. So the only important temperature for us as a clinician or as clinicians is body temperature. And you, here you can see pictures out of that study and what you see, the curvature and the radius are always the same, but the width of the artificial root canals is different and congruent to every other investigated instrument. And therefore, I think that was one of the only studies, I think the only one where you really can compare instruments each to each with the same torque, with the same working load they have to do. Um, what did they compare? Uh, very sophisticated files like the Hyoflex one, the two anatomy twisted files, GSI in two different tapers, M2, F360 files. And what were the results? First, we can look into fractures at body temperature out of 20 files. So with the F360 from Comet, they had 20 fractures out of 20 files. With the two anatomy, you, they had 20 fractures out of 20 files. With the twisted files, 20 fractures out of 20. With the GSI 04, one file out of 20. Significant different. With the GSI 06, four out of 20. Here you see again the importance of taper. With the M2, 20 out of 20. And the Hyflex 1 EDM was the only file which is really comparable to GSI, at least to the 06 file with 4% taper. But numbers get quite more stunning if we look into the cycles to fracture at body temperature. And um, I don't tell you the numbers exactly, you can look at them, but what you can see, a big and significant difference in between the high flex file and every other file. And again, a significant difference compared between the high flex files and the GSI files, because here with the GSI files, there were more than 5,000 tackles to fracture. Um, what happened then? They simply stopped the experiment. They stopped after 10 minutes because uh, in middle of all files, they had no fractures after 5,000 cycles with the GSI files. And that shows at body temperature, how safe these files work. So my last point for today, the manual. The manual is very, very important. Why is the manual so important? But uh, because I wanted to show you scientifically, the scientific background, how safe these files are, how the files are designed, but that does not count for you. You have to know that and you can be aware of it, but what counts is really what's happening in my daily work. And what I wanted to do is to make your daily work with very safe files as easy as possible. And that's why I'd like to introduce to you now to the manual, uh, which I'm doing in my office every other day. If we have to talk, or if we talk, if we talk about the manual, we first have to talk for one second about apical preparation size, and that's very important for me because with the apical per, uh, preparation size, we come back to our biological objectives. Why we do endodontics, which I referred to from just the beginning of my lecture. So, if you look into a cross section in the apical part of a root canal. And we look into a histological picture of one of a very, very good colleagues from the States. And he showed exactly what a number 25 file does in a, the apical part of a root canal. In that case, nothing. It does not even touch the root canal. And that shall show you um, that it depends on the anatomy of the root canal, how Big, what the last apical size of a file which we need for um, sufficient preparation of the root canal, at least mechanical preparation. 
On the other hand, there is a really, really important study, a very new study from 21 from the ACTA group from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Um, and what they investigated is, which is the preparation size, which is, uh, which you have to have that irrigation solution is really reaching the most apical parts of our root canal system after preparation. And, and that's just a picture out of that study. And the result is very, very important because there was no delivery of irrigant to working lengths with any apical preparation size up to 25 or six. That means up to 25 or six, if you prepare a root canal, you cannot assume that there is any delivery of irrigant and therefore you cannot fulfill the biological requirements of your chemical preparation. Um, the, the, the disinfection of your root canal systems, irrigation solutions. And the flow rate, that means the pressure, did not change these results. On the other hand, we had irrigant penetration to working lengths from size 30, irregardless of the taper of the preparation and the flow rate. That means you do have to achieve at least the preparation of ISO 30 to fulfill the biological objectives of your endodontic treatment. Additionally, there are a lot of different micro CT studies um, about the, the anatomy, the apical anatomy of root canals. And I went through a lot of these studies before we invented that manual. And if you see these studies, what they conclude about is that an apical enlargement significantly influences the cleaning and disinfection of the root canal, thus increasing the chances of treatment success. So we need a certain size of even the smallest root canal. And um, to conclude and, and to put everything together, there was a very, very good review um, article and they looked into the different tooth anatomies, different root canal anatomies. And in the end, they had recommended an apical preparation size. And um, if you look into it, they recommended for the central incisor, for example, an apical preparation size of 60. For a molar for mesial buckle, 35 to 40. And if you think about that irrigation fluid study, you see 30 is the minimum required preparation size. Um, in a palatal, at least 45 and so on and so on. And what we did, we transferred that into our manual, these recommended apical preparation sizes. And now we come to the really last point, the GSI manual. The manual. Um, first of all, I would recommend to you to use the smaller tapered GSI instruments, the O4 tapered instruments. The second point is the right rotational speed. And there exist, already exist some studies about that, independent studies again. And um, to get a bit quicker through it, the GSI files at 500 rounds per minute generated significantly lower screen forces compared to 300 rounds per minute. That means run the GSI files quicker than other files. And GSI at 500 rounds per minute generated significantly lower clockwise torque compared to 300 rounds per minute. And there was no beneficial effect in OTR motion. That means the right setting for the GSI files are 500 rounds per minute and 3.0 Newton centimeters. And that, that's the right setting for every other GSI file from the smallest up to the biggest size of GSI files. So you do not have to change the setting, first of all, and you can, do you, can use every other endodontic motor. Um, 
And the conclusion in that study was that we get a torque reduction via increased cutting efficiency and shaping ability at a higher speed. Because we get reduced contact times. So that's again scientifically proof. 500 rounds per minute for all files, 3.0 Newton centimeter setting for all files. How do you handle them? As you are used to, gentle up and down movements, clean the fluids regularly, use only gentle downward force, don't push the files into the root canal, and they even change their sound if there is much more torque on it. So listen to the sound of safety. If the sound gets brighter and higher, remove them, clean them, irrigate, and do a second round with the same file. So here a small film, the G side 2504 in the MP2 after the G side 1304 glider file. And that's in real time. And how you see how easy and gentle the file moves to working like this. So what about the menu? We have five different types of G sci fi files the 1304, the 2504, the 3504, the 4504, and the 50. And now is the point when to use which file. To make it very simple, you just need two hand files. You need an ISO 15 hand file and an ISO 25 hand file. Now, the first case, the ISO 15 hand file does not fit to working lengths. Now you have to have a, to create the glide pass with manually filing up to 10, ISO 10. I would recommend to you the D finder. Then you take the GSI glider 1304, afterward directly the 2504, and after that directly the 3504. So that's the so-called basic sequence or the sequence for nar near, narrow and severely curved root canals. And every difficult case I showed to you was done by that sequence. What do we do with the last five 3504? We require all biological objectives and requirements of a proper endodontic therapy. Second case. No, here, small video. Many a glide pass, the ISO 10 Finder. If it, you can work it through to working lengths easily. Next, the 1304 glider. And you hear the sound, gets easily on working lengths. And next comes the 2504. Second case, the ISO 15 hand file fits to working lengths. So what do you do now? You start over with the g 2504. You do not need the g glider file. Then you take the 3504 and you end up with the 4504. Again, you fulfill all biological objectives and requirements of proper endodontic therapy. And the last case video here, ISO 15 hand file fits easily to working lengths. My first rotary file, 2504. And you see how smooth and easy it runs to working lengths. Last case, even ISO 2555 fits to working lengths. You start with the 3504, takes the 4504, and up, end up with a 50 or four. And hopefully in the future, we get a 60 or four. And um, what I show you with that manual, it's very, very simple to, for, to fit to every any other anatomy. That means you just need two hand files to decide about the anatomy. Don't bother about curvature, about how narrow the root canal is. If a 15 does not fit to working lengths, Stick to the first part of the manual. If it fit, stick fits to working length, second part. If even a 25 fits to working length, third part of the manual. So to fit nearly every other anatomy, you just need three different G-side files. 
Here are some more cases which I done regularly and we use TSI files now, I think for 95 to 99% of my daily work in the practice. That's the last one, more complicated. Um, just to show you the pictures uh, to end up with, um, we did the contrast X-ray. Now you know the manual exactly which we did it. We took the ISO 10 D finder, the ISO 8 D finder, and then the ISO 10 D finder, the GSI glider file, directly after about the 2504 and the 3504 file. So in summary, in complex root canal systems, the mechanical preparation has to be adapted to the given anatomical situation. A correct endodontic access cavity is prerequisite for every endodontic success. And the GSI file system, which is safe, efficient, and easy to use, could be a very helpful tool in your hands to carry out safe, easy, and proper mechanical debridement. I thank you very, very much for your interest, for staying with me for such a long time. I thank you for your attention and hopefully I will see the one or other of you live in the future. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Uh, Dr. Schlichting, thank you. Uh, there's some questions coming in, but before I get to those, I'd like to invite viewers to use the chat box on the right side of your screen to ask any questions that you have. Our first is what is your opinion concerning a minimally shaped access cavity preparation? Um, um, I'm very critical about that point. Um, because I think you have to uh, to see with which you with what you're dealing. And um, I think these minimal invasive, we, we try to say minimal invasive as well, but as big as possible, as, as helpful and, and needful. Um, what does it mean? My first point is, I think every other tooth who needs an endodontic treatment needs, first of all, a proper and good endodontic treatment. And that means a good preparation, a good mechanical preparation of the root canal system, a good irrigation of the root canal system. And second comes minimal invasive treatment because if, especially if you do not have the possibility to have a microscope, uh, you are even not able to do that minimal invasive excess cavities. And even if you have a microscope, there are already existing a lot of studies uh, that the disinfection and the debridement of the root canals um, is, is, uh, is worse then by doing a more conservative, but still minimal invasive excess cavity. So there is a lot of literature which shows uh, the minimal invasive uh, excess cavity compromises treatment success. And there are only some literatures which favor the minimal invasive excess cavity. Okay, um, next question. Which kind of obturation technique just in combination with the GSI system? Actually, you can uh, use any other obturation technique. I, I'm still doing uh, the, the classical warm uh, vertical obturation, uh, shoulder technique, warm vertical obturation. Um, it's even possible to squirt the root canals with warm gut aperture. Um, but what is a trend, the trend worldwide? I think in the moment, the trend worldwide is matching single cone technique in combination with these new silicone, uh, silicate based uh, sealers. Um, they are often referred to as bioceramic seal sealers. Um, and there you just need a single cone um, coated with a lot of uh, sealer, bioceramic sealer. And um, if you look into the literature again, there they have quite good um, results with that filling technique. So in general, you can use any other filling technique. I think the future will be the bioceramic based or the calcium silicate based sealers in combination with the cold technique. What kind of would you suggest? If I would suggest, uh, I, I would still uh, stick with a warm technique because I think there are so many irregularities uh, that you 
uh, that uh, got a perch, at least as long as we need, got a perch if it's better, if it's plastified. Uh, but um, I'm absolutely conscious about the point that with a warm filling technique, you do need a microscope. And therefore, I think um, a very quite good alternative are these new bioceramic sealers in, in connection with a um, single cone technique. What is your irrigation protocol? Um, uh, to put it simply, gold standard is still sodium hypochlorite and EDTA. Um, the EDTA is always taken to remove the smear layer from uh, the root canal system, which is produced by our preparation, mechanical preparation. Therefore, um, in recent years, I changed my protocol. We are now using sodium hypochlorite, which is mixed with uh, hydroxy, um, hydroxyethylene bisphosphonate. Um, it's all referred to as uh, ethydronic acid. And uh, if you look again into literature, it could be, or, or uh, things look that it uh, has a slightly better uh, microbiological um, activity than sodium hypochlorite and EDTA. And uh, the good thing is uh, you, you do not produce, you do not get any smear layer by doing so. So you have just one single irrigation uh, solution which you need. How do you achieve to very tiny root canals? Pardon me, I, I didn't get the question again. How, how do you achieve access to very tiny root canals? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's often uh, difficult because uh, the one thing is uh, that, you, that you see these root canals or perhaps you can, you can, uh, you can feel them. Uh, and the other thing is how do you get access? Um, my, my way of doing it is the following. I try to open them up a little bit with, um, for example, so-called microfiles or, or, or uh, a bit more tapered hand files. Microfiles are nothing else than a bit more tapered hand file on a grip. So you do not see your fingers, but you see the tip of the file. And, and therefore I do some sort of very, very tiny coronal preflaring. After I did that, I'm using a rotary glide pass file, like the GSI uh, glider, for example. And I inserted only three to four millimeters into the tiny opening of the root canal. And just to do a bit more coronal preflaring. Don't try to push it into the root canal, it will break. But you just want to open up the root canal system a bit more with your rotary instrument. And after that, you can get much easier access either with these special access um, opening files, uh, rotary files, or for example, with a number one Gates Glidden Okay. Um, besides, besides your manual, additional GSI files available, when do you use them? Um, absolutely, they are available. And from time to time, um, they make sense. Um, for, you can go through my manual and it will work. But exa for example, if you have really, really curved root canals, uh, it makes sense to use an uh, ISO 30 in between to, to, uh, because then you have less torque and, and less physical uh, forces on your file. Or simply put, you do want a different preparation size, then uh, you have the chance to uh, use different files. Okay. Um, what are comparable file systems to the GSI system, if, if so? Um, from the point of, of the design and, and, and the alloy, there is nothing comparable right in the moment, just in the moment. Um, I think comparable are the high-flex EDM files from Coltine. They are very, very good files, but um, to be fair, they are I think one generation older, and they do not have, uh, they are more complicated in, in the user's manual, I think. Okay. Um, have you had any fractures with the G files? No, I didn't. I cannot tell you anything other. But <laughs> okay. I, didn't, I didn't have any fracture. I know from one fracture, uh, even at a university, 
Um, but the point was, it was a severely, severely curved root canal, and it was an assistant, and she was taking an ISO, uh, an, an 06 tapered file. And that's what the point for me, uh, the more severe curve the root canals get, the less taper is, uh, is the best. Okay, and our last question for today, uh, why do the GZI not work in reciprocation motion? Um, actually, uh, they, they do work in reciprocation motion as well, uh, but they are not designed for working in reciprocation motion. Um, simply put, why, why did we invent uh, the reciprocation motion? Uh, we invented the reciprocation motion to get rid of the five fractures. And therefore, uh, we invented a more safe um, movement. Today, with the modern heat-treated rotary instruments, I think we have some more advantages, like less debris extrusion, for example, less generated uh, torque um, uh, compared to the reciprocation motion. And therefore, uh, we just simply do not need it in the GSI files. OK, well, thank you, everyone, for your questions. But we've run out of time. And if we did not get to your question, we will answer them after the webinar via email. In the next 30 minutes, we'll send you a link to the replay of this presentation and instructions on how to access the CE quiz. Be sure to complete the free CE quiz associated with this webinar to receive your continuing education credit. But thank you again for attending and a special thank you to Dr. Ralph Schlifting and our sponsor for this webinar, Money Inc. Thank you and stay safe out there. Thank you, stay safe, bye-bye.